Welcome to Systems Engineering's presentation on DMARC Basics. One of the most common forms of computer security breaches is through email spoofing. Email spoofing is a technique used by criminals to disguise themselves as a known trusted source. A criminal can use email spoofing to trick your users into providing private information, which can lead to a serious security breach. A criminal can also use email spoofing to trick your customers the same way, by pretending to be someone from your company. This might come in the form of an email from your boss asking you to order some gift cards. This could also be an email from an IT manager asking you to install some software. Email spoofers are constantly refining their approach and creating more and more convincing emails to trick people. So what can you do to prevent this from happening? Well, you can implement DMARC. DMARC is an authentication protocol that verifies emails sent from your domain. If you have a DMARC policy in place, every time someone sends an email from your domain, the receiving server performs a series of verification steps on that message. These verification steps are used to determine if the message in question was sent from someone who's authorized to send it. If the sender cannot be verified, then the email will be rejected or quarantined by the recipient's mail server. There are three components that need to be in place within your organization to fully implement DMARC. The first is an SPF record, which is a DNS record used to define the IP addresses of servers in your organization that are allowed to send emails from your domain. Your SPF record will include your own email server and any other third-party services that you're using to send email. These can be things like email marketing tools, e-commerce tools, third-party spam filtering tools, etc. All legitimate services that you use to send emails on behalf of your domain need to be included in the SPF record for DMARC to be successful and to have reliable email delivery. If the sender IP address matches up with any of the addresses in your SPF record, the email is considered an SPF pass. If it does not, then the email is considered an SPF fail. Next is DKIM. DKIM is a technology that adds a digital signature to all outgoing emails, containing a private key. The signature in the outgoing message is paired with a public DNS record containing the public key to that signature. If the public and private keys match up, the email is considered a DKIM pass. If the keys do not match up, the email is considered a DKIM fail. The third component to this solution is DMARC itself. DMARC controls are set with a DNS record that tells the recipient mail server what to do in the event of an SPF or DKIM failure and where to send a report of what happened during this email transaction. The DMARC policy options are do nothing, quarantine, or reject. By configuring your DMARC record with a reporting email address and subscribing to a DMARC reporting tool, you can monitor the delivery status of all emails sent from your domain. By monitoring your DMARC reports, you can determine if anyone is attempting to spoof your domain. You can also use this data to determine if your SPF record is missing any important servers or if you're sending emails from any services that are not signing with DKIM. In the beginning of your DMARC deployment, you will likely start with a do nothing or P equals none policy. Once you're confident that none of the reported SPF or DKIM failures originate from your legitimate email systems, you can move to, to a P equals quarantine or P equals reject policy. It will be important to be vigilant in the future when adding new email sending systems to your business. You will want to ensure that each new system is added to your SPF record and that the new system is configured to sign outbound emails with DKIM. If you have any questions about DMARC, Systems Engineering is here to help. Thanks for watching.